is example six in our vector topic. We've done a couple of examples using the vector product. If you haven't seen these examples three through to five, I would suggest that you check these out first. Um, here's another uh, area question. Example four it was, where we're finding the area of a parallelogram. This one's finding the area of a triangle. Now, this is just a little development of example four. Um, if I were to uh, bring in this diagram here, it highlights the property that uh, we're using here. And that is for any uh, two vectors, A and B, uh, we can calculate the area of the parallelogram that it draws out with sides A and B by calculating the vector product and then calculating the magnitude of that vector product. It seems like an odd connection and uh, I'm sure that if you want to uh, investigate why, it'll take you down a really interesting uh, route of mathematical discovery, but for the moment I'm just going to put it out there as a fact. Now it stands to reason that if the area of the parallelogram is calculated by the magnitude of the vector product, then if I want to calculate, for instance, the area of a triangle drawn out by the, the two vectors, uh, then it's, that's half of the area of the parallelogram. So if I know the, the full magnitude of the vector product, all I need to do is half it. Or in other words, the area of the triangle is equal to a half of the magnitude of A cross B. So that's really the, the formula or the rule I'm going to use at this point. So we need to work out uh, what the vectors A and B are going to be in this case, the vector product and then the area. So I've got uh, three points, A, B and C. Uh, again, I don't know where they uh, lie in relation uh, to each other. So see on my diagram, um, just for purposes, I'm going to imagine that uh, the vertex is going to be at B. So we've got A, uh, B and C. Does it really matter? I'm not sure if it does. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to work out hang on, vectors B, A and B, C. Uh, let's start with B, A. So vector B A is position vector A minus B, which is 1, 3, negative 2, minus 4, 3, 0, which gives us negative 3, 0, negative 2. As my vector B, A and vector B, C, position vector C minus B, which is 2, 1, 1, minus 4, 3, 0. Which gives me this vector, negative 2, negative 2, 1. Uh, I can then find the vector product. by finding the uh, determinant of uh, this 3 by 3 matrix with i, j, k in row 1. Uh, I'm going to put uh, vector b, a in row 2 and vector b, c in row 3. The resultant vector is a multiple of i minus a multiple of j plus a multiple of k. I'm going to do my wee thing. Zero minus 4 times i, uh, then columns 1 and 3, we've got negative 3 minus 4, and in k, uh, missing out co column k, I've got 6 minus 0, which uh, gives me a value of negative 4i, I've got negative 7 uh, plus 7j plus 6k. So that's the vector product, and this time I want to find the area of the triangle. So we could say that, I'll push put, put this down again, the area of the triangle 
is equal to half times the magnitude of BA across BC. So we're going to have to work out what uh, the magnitude is. Pythagoras' theorem again. Uh, so we've got the elements, negative 4 squared plus 7 squared plus 6 squared, which is a half times the square root of 16, 49, and 36. At 16 and 49, 50, 65, and 65 plus 36 is 101. Uh, we could approximate that. Uh, it's obviously going to be just round about 5. The square root of 101 uh, divided by 2, 5.024. Okay. So, uh, the area of the triangle uh, can be constructed in the same way as the area of the parallelogram using this really interesting connection that the magnitude of the vector product relates to the area of the shape that the two vectors, original vectors, draw out. Okay, so have a go, practice at some of these things because it's worth investigating.